G'day folks, it's Rob here, and in today's clip I'm going to give you a bit of an update on the progress on my parents' aquaponic system. It's uh, been a very long drawn out saga. It started off as a chop and flip aquaponic system, and then I expanded it into a three grow bed split flow system. Now they've got no fish in it at the, in it at the moment, we're just waiting on my father to finish off a little um, storage can cabinet for the air compressor, the backup air system, and also the testing gear. So it's nice and handy to the system itself. Now this clip was originally shot from my Farm Your Own Yard and YouTube membership supporters. Thank you very much for the support, folks. But I've had a load of people ask me how the system's going, so I thought I'd share this with you. Now a lot of the plants in Mum's systems will look ratty and tatty due to um, some caterpillar damage. Um, I've actually had a load of people ask me what is safe to use in aquaponics to look after pests. So that is a clip that will be coming in the next couple of weeks after I finish off the uh, radial flow filter clip for you all to check out. So um, I won't cover it too much in this, um, but yeah, keep in mind, that's why the beetroot look absolutely dismal. Um, but I'll pretty much all leave it there for now, and I'll come back at the end and we'll throw some feed in for our little jade perch and give you a look at how they're going. Just around to mum and dad's today, so a different... Hey, uh, that's my mum. Happy mum's day. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we're just coming around having a look at the system, getting it ready for the fish, just seeing what's going on with it. I didn't take a uh, photo earlier, I probably should have, uh, but the pH was 5.9. Uh, Mum and Daddy are using rainwater, but as you can see, if my thingo will turn around, there, we've got around about 7.3 at the moment. That's because I brought around some of the um, calcium hydroxide, not almonds, calcium hydroxide, and popped in two heap table, uh, teaspoons of that, this stuff here. And yeah, it seems to have raised it up nicely. They are having some issues with some algae. You can see it down there. And there was a load over in the fish tank and that's because they don't have a proper lid for it at the moment. The last one, um, yeah, fell apart. So we're just working out uh, how we're going to make the new one. Uh, we've decided it's going to sit on this top rail here. So any excess water will just run off. There's a load of the stringy algae on top of here and I've given it a bit of a, um, a broom. So it's a bit hard to see the bottom, but yeah, there are some solids accumulating. And the solids lifting outlet is not working too well. And I don't know whether that's because the, the, the fish, the, well, there's no fish in there, they're not moving the solids around to take it out. And the flow rate in here looks, you know, fairly decent. There is a little bit coming through, I just, and you can see the odd solid coming up and out, but I don't think it's enough uh, to create a large enough drag to pull solids from elsewhere in the tank at the moment. Um, you know, if fish were added, it may be different. So instead of mucking around and playing around with this at mum and dad's place, which is a 20 minute drive away, what I thought I might do is I might revert this back to a normal, um, just the, the two inch or 50 mil solids lifting outlet in the corner there. And um, yeah, just plugging up this one there. I'll actually plugging it up on the outside with a cap and taking off the drain fitting from the inside. Um, it's going to mean a little bit of work because of the rain we've had recently and because it's not that hot the plants aren't using a lot of water so the water level is fairly high in here and two of the beds are already run at constant, in a constant flood arrangement so we're going to have to empty some water out into um, another container, another IBC, Dad's got a spare one and a couple of 200 litre drums so yeah we can cap that one off there. Um, there are a few issues, obviously we have the good guys here, there's some ladybugs there on mum's poison or cilantro, I think some people know it as, and they're also having a couple of nutrient issues and the plants just aren't, you know, doing much chop, but that, you know, goes without saying, there's not a lot of nutrients going in here constantly. Just thought I'd come back to mum's and add this little section in here, folks. The plants are nutrient deficient, uh, mainly because mum's only dosing up with quarter of a cup of the Charlie Carp fish emulsion a week at the moment. Uh, we got our wires crossed and due to lockdown I just wasn't able to come over and check it out. So you can see there are some obvious nutrient deficiencies. Uh, they have been out here a little bit more vigilantly pulling off the caterpillars. So some of the plants are bouncing back nicely. But yeah, it'll only take a week or so and things will start looking a little bit better. But I thought I'd just add this in. Uh, just so you knew what the uh, system was being fed up with. And just to give you some comparison, this is mum and dad's veggie pod that I set up for them just recently. And the parsley and the lettuce are doing a lot better than the ones that she planted out in the system. Just walk by mum's pumpkin plant here. And this lettuce here that I said was um, sown was actually um, the same age as the lettuce in the veggie pod. 
and so is that parsley. So just to give you some idea, um, not performing to its capacity at the moment, but that will change as soon as the fish go in. Uh, you can see a lot of damage on the broccoli, and that's because they've got a load of cluster caterpillars on there. They're the ones that create these little translucent um, feasting patches. And also there was a number of the normal cabbage, white butterfly cabbage um, caterpillars on there. In fact, we missed another one, Mum. We've both been, Dad and I have been over this plant, Mum and I have been over this plant, Mum had another go, and we still missed one. So, give him the squish now. Um, someone told me that you've got to leave them on there because the leaves are pheromones or hormones and, yeah, scares off the butterflies. It's never really worked for me, but that's what you get. Uh, the other beds are only sparsely planted out with amities, beetroot, and oh, hello amity, um, uh, rosemary over there. It's my niece. She's probably going to kick me for making fun of her. Uh, parsley, and Mum has sprinkled in some um, lettuce seeds as well. So yeah, um, as soon as we work out the, um, or we'll fix the drainage or the um, the solids outlet. Oh, a new filter, 200 litre filter will go in as well to handle the flow. And Dad has a stainless steel, looked like a water fountain cover. Yep. Water fountain cover that is, um, it's got vents in it, which will be good for the air compressor. It's going to set up down here, so we can run the air directly into there, plus the backup hooked into it, just like ours as well. And Berkeloid, I think I will be trying your idea of having the, um, depends on how noisy the pump is, a battery charger running into the battery, uh, which is also running a 12 volt pump. Uh, I'm just going to play around with it and see how loud it is because uh, right on the other side of that glass door is where mum sits and I don't think she wants a uh, noisy air pump running 24-7 next to where she does all her knitting and crocheting and doctor filling. So there we go, just a little bit of an update. Oh yeah, and once that box is done, um, we will be going out getting some more fish and I'll shoot the clip on how we're moving them over uh, with mum and dad's fish. So there you go. Hope you've uh, found that a little bit interesting. I know an update on Mum's system has been a while in the making. But anyway, I'm rambling on now. Um, so I'm going to pretty much all leave it there. So we're back here now with our system here. Now there are a few issues I am having with this system. You might be able to tell that the inlet over there is um, now pointed down under the water. I'm having issues with a few solids being trapped down the front edge in particular. You're not probably going to be able to make them out here. I don't want to speak the fish too much. But I am getting a little bit of a deposit. I think the, um, the the poor little old pump that I'm using is just slowing down a bit. So I've actually bought a new pump. And I'll be popping that in um, later on in the week. Uh, just to see how it goes. Try and get the exchange rate up to at least um, twice an hour. So that'll be roughly a 2,000 litre an hour flow through this system. Now I don't want to keep these little fish waiting too long. So I'll just grab the feed. Let's throw some in over the back there. You might remember from the last clip that these guys were getting roughly around about 30 grams a day. Uh, that's 1.5% uh, of their body weight. I have noticed though that they are eating a little bit more than that. Um, I worked it out on a 50 gram weight fish, but I'm fairly sure a few of them have put on a fair amount of weight. I think I've spooked them a little bit coming right over the top of the tank, so hopefully they'll polish all that off. But yeah, they have been um, hitting it rather well. They tend to hit it a lot better at twilight. Uh, so I probably should have filmed this a little bit later. Yeah, it looks like they're balking at the camera as they come over here. So um, yeah, more than happy with the way they're going. Uh, the water temp at the moment is around about 21 degrees Celsius. So that's well and truly over the 18 degrees, which is the um, cutoff for them to be able to metabolize the food as they um, consume it. So I'm pretty happy about that. They should continue to put on size as long as I can keep that water temperature up. Worst case scenario, I might toss in a heater uh, just to add a couple of degrees into the fish tank at night, but we'll just wait and see what happens there. I've actually bought a better set of scales, so once that arrives, I'll um, pull a couple of these fellas out and we'll weigh them up so I can get a more accurate weight uh, to base their feeding schedule on. So yeah, I was hoping they'd feed a little bit better than this. So I was hoping to post the um, radial flow settler clip last weekend, but things just got a little bit hectic for me. So I will be working on it through the week and I will upload it as this weekend's clip. So I hope you stick around to check that out. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, you know the drill. Click on the subscribe button, pound on the bell icon, and fingers crossed, YouTube will send you a notification once I upload the clip to the channel. And if you are after some more aquaponic content, you can always click on the little buttons at the end here 
that will pop up and take you to a playlist that has a load for you folks who are just starting out. But I will pretty much all leave it there. Hope you've all enjoyed the clip and I will catch you all later on in the week. Cheers all. Have a top one.